Ah, the, the light this morning. I just love this blue hour light in the desert. This is just fantastic. So, coming up to the scene now that I'm going to be shooting, which is this right over here. I think I have the angle right. It's right about there. And, um, Actually, wait, no, yeah, somewhere right around there. <laughs> it's so hard to see on these LCD screens. Everything is backwards. At any rate, uh, you'll see in a second. But yeah, it's very quiet. Just not a sound at all. There's no wind. And uh, it's just amazing. It's just no sound at all. <sighs> all right, yes, so, so we have this right here, which is really, really cool. And you can see it's already starting to get some, some, uh, some beautiful light. I'm gonna definitely get on that. And then beyond it, over here, you have this nice, I think it's, uh, it's a white rock. It could be limestone. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, but that's beautiful as well. And that, that looks really awesome. All right, so I got to put this uh, tripod down. Or put you down, rather. So that uh, I can set up my other tripod. And, uh, and get some uh, photography done. composition up the hill. Light is starting to come up. Well, I'm probably pretty close in the camera. Light is uh, starting to come up. It's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And, uh, and it is looking awesome. So this is the, this is the white rock I was talking about just a minute ago. This right here. This is what I've been shooting in the background. And it's kind of similar to what I was doing in uh, Goblin Valley the other day. Wow, this is just amazing. I don't know how well you can see this, but... It's just beautiful. Um, anyway, this is similar. It's kind of like, you know, how I was trying to put a color and some kind of accent in the back of the photo. And uh, now I'm going to get more of a detail shot and get a close-up because it has this wonderful bit of rock that's kind of sticking off the side like almost like a, uh, a mini hoodoo. And uh, we're gonna give this a try. hottest time of the day. The sun is at its its harshest. And um, and honestly, it kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was going to be hard coming out here and uh, and doing some of this, but it's um, I'm sitting on the side of uh, my camper van right now because the sun is directly on the other side shining this way. And there's there's literally no other shade around me anywhere. You really start to 
<laughs> question your sanity. You know, why you, why you put up with this and why you come out and do this and subject yourself to something like this. That's the thing about landscape photography that I know that I've learned over you know, the past couple of years is that how much you have to put into it to really get uh, the kind of results that you're looking for. You, you can't just you know, show up on a, you know, at, a, at a scene and, and expect to get great photos at any time of day. I mean, you have to plan it, you have to research it. You have to um, put in uh, the time and the effort and it's, it, it's a lot of work and especially in an environment like this with weather like this and, and sunlight like this. But I'm glad I'm here. I mean, I have been thinking about this trip for a while. It's unlike anything else. It, you don't feel like you're on planet Earth when you're out here. And it's especially weird when you're alone and you're by yourself because you, in a way, feel like the astronaut that was left behind. Uh, at any rate, um, we're getting closer and closer to uh, being able to get out and shoot a little bit which I am very much looking forward to. This is along State Road 24, and it's kind of a pass-through area, I think, for a lot of tourists who are either going towards Capitol Reef National Park towards the east or towards uh, Arches National Park or uh, Candylands over towards the west. And those are beautiful national parks and they're fantastic. For me, however, this area, this kind of almost like no man's land go-between area is actually the reason I came to Utah because I've been doing a lot of research on this area. I've been looking at you know, a lot of uh, aerial, like satellite kind of, uh, you know, images through Google Earth. And this, for me, is exactly what I'm looking for creatively with my photography. I'm just very intrigued and fascinated by these landscapes which don't, don't, you know, particularly resemble Earth, if that makes sense. And the reason for that is because it's completely uh, uninhabited, it's desolate. There is nothing living out here at all. It's just a sea of rock and these giant boulders that you see all the way along this ridge line here. Right now, in the middle of the day, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, they're being, you know, painted with this, you know, midday sun light, which is very warm, it's very yellow, it's very, you know, kind of orange in tone. But I suspect, however, that once that light is gone and we get a softer, more, um, more of a blue hue to the light, then some of these tones that are present in the sand here and up on these hills are really going to come out and it's going to draw that color out of the ground and out of the mounds and just make this scene look even more strange and more surreal, and more just not of this world at all. At least that is what I am hoping for. But there's this uh, you know, nice hillside here, and underneath it is a flat spot where I think I'll be able to pull in backwards, and you know, then the, the camper van will be sitting level, and I won't be sleeping like I feel like I'm falling backwards or forwards or to the side or whatever. So tomorrow in the morning, because I believe the sun is going to be coming up from that direction over there, at least according to uh, my mobile app that I'm using, it's going to be coming up that way, which means that these rocks here on this, uh, on this ridge line uh, are going to be illuminated from the side. And I hope <laughs> that 
it'll be just a really nice, soft, blue-hued light. So I'd like to walk you through a few of the photos that I captured the following morning during blue hour and golden hour at sunrise. The first photos that I captured were taken from the ground where I just basically set the tripod as tall as I possibly could so that I wouldn't have to lean it backwards uh, too much, lean the camera backwards. And I just shot directly um, at the hillside. One of the things that I uh, rather like about this photo and one of the things that you know caught my attention and, and you know made me want to shoot this in the first place was this really nice little y-shaped wash that's down here at the at the bottom of the photo you know it's obviously something that's been created from you know, thousands and thousands of years of you know rainfall and water you know just washing down the hill and it creates a nice leading line for the eye to kind of be guided through that foreground through the bottom of the photo up into the hill So after I was done with that, I picked up my tripod and I walked up the hill and I started shooting some of these rock formations uh, a, a bit closer. And this one in particular caught my attention. And, and the thing that I, I like about this photo is the fact that you have this nice balance between shadows, which are cool and have a fair amount of magenta and, um, and cyan in them. And then you have this uh, nice little splash of warm highlight that's uh, being caused by the side light because the sun was rising in the east. And just some of the first hints of that golden light were starting to hit the side of these rocks here. And um, anytime you're able to get that, where you have a nice balance between cool and warm in one image, that's just a really nice way to introduce, you know, not just contrast in luminosity, but contrast in your color as well. Okay, so this next photo is a rather interesting one. This is one of the things that fascinates me about shooting in this general area of the United States, because you will see these rock formations and these um, you know, hoodoos and things which just don't seem to make a lot of sense, you know? I mean, this is a very large, very heavy um, boulder that is leaning backwards and is somehow being supported, adequately supported by just this tiny little bump in the ground underneath. How this is not just tipped completely over backwards, um, I'm not sure, but it almost looks like this was placed here, like someone just kind of, you know, um, you know, dropped it down and and purposely positioned it this way, almost like a like a uh, like a religious icon or something. It's just one of those oddball things that you come across when you're out in these landscapes. And I just I just love these kinds of uh, rock formations. And I shot plenty more uh, later in my trip, which I'll be sharing in a in a future video. But um, this is one of the images that I captured from that morning. So I was walking around and I was searching for something else to shoot. And I, at some point, I happened to look down at my feet and I saw this. These beautiful, white, almost porcelain looking rock uh, formations that were just floating above that red, that dark red uh, desert landscape. And, you know, not only was the, you know, just the, the color separation of having these white rocks on top of the red, you know, something, something cool and interesting to see. But what really made an impact on me was, you know, when I was standing there looking at these and composing an image, all I could think about was the fact that these delicate white rocks that were here in front of me were completely undisturbed. There were no cracks in them. There were no chips. They hadn't been stepped on. They hadn't been run over by anything. They existed in this form, perfectly intact, despite the fact that they've been out in this environment for thousands and thousands of years. And yet, by some sheer luck, they've never been disturbed in any way. 
And it actually made me kind of anxious when I was standing there because the last thing I wanted to do was drop a bag on them or trip over them or knock them with a tripod leg or something like that. And I just felt this weird sense of uh, responsibility because I, I, I just so believe in this principle of, you know, carry out what you carry in, leave it as you found it. And the last thing I wanted to do was harm this or disturb it in any way because it's intrinsic beauty, the thing which just makes it what it is and makes it unique and makes it something that was so enjoyable to see that morning was purely the net result of just being left alone for thousands of years. And yet here I was, possibly the first and only person who's ever really stopped and looked at these before. And, uh, and all I could think about was just how remarkable and unexplored this was. And, and thankfully so, quite honestly, because um, yeah, it, it's a good thing, I think, that you know, we have things that are unique like this. And it's it's just miraculous to me that things like this can exist and, and not be harmed in some way. So finally, we got some good light. This is the end of the day. Blue hour has come. Blue hour is pretty much gone now. Uh, but for about 10 minutes there, all of the skies around here behind me, it's kind of hard to tell, I think, because the, well, or perhaps maybe not, um, everything behind me back here, all of these, uh, all these like uh, peaks and mounds and rocks and boulders and all this uh, crazy landscape out here in the Utah desert, all of it turned like this pink and magenta color. It, it was just phenomenal. It was so beautiful. And... I mean, there couldn't be a better better way to describe, like, the, the disposable nature of beauty. I don't mean to get all deep with it, but, man, I mean, it lasted, I mean, like, maybe five, eight minutes at most, and, and then it just was gone. I mean, you still have some nice orange light behind this, uh, you know, ridge line over here, but uh, for the most part... That was it, and that's <laughs> that's what you wait around for, for hours and hours and hours. And so in my trusty steed over here, I've been kind of crisscrossing the desert and uh, driving quickly back and forth, just looking for anything, looking for any, um, uh, you know, compositions, just basically chasing the light and following it and just seeing where, where it's going, what it's illuminating, and... Um, and trying to take advantage of it. And uh, and I think I got some uh, really beautiful shots uh, just a little bit uh, down this way of these three uh, peaks that were off in the distance. I used um, my super long telephoto. I have a 100 to 200, I'm sorry, 100 to 400 um, telephoto lens with me. And it is a beast of a telephoto. I mean, most people use it for wildlife photography. Uh, but I love using it for landscapes because you can reach like really, really far into a scene and you can pull out these uh, elements that otherwise you just wouldn't see. So I'm feeling really good about this because I feel like I finally got the kind of image that I was hoping to get out here. Crossing fingers, I hope it turns out... I think that's going to do it for here in the uh, Badlands of Utah, just outside of Hanksville. I've been here for a couple of days now, and uh, the sun is now up. It is, it is full-fledged daytime at this point. I think it's only about, I don't know, maybe 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning now. Uh, but the sun is definitely up. I, um, uh, and and I, think it's, I think it's time to be packing up and moving on. I loved being here. This was such a fantastic experience being out here in this landscape. I 
love this area of Utah so much. This was my first time here. I've been around the southern end of Utah down near Arizona. I explored that last year, but this year, this is the first time I've been here in the Midlands before. And I kind of had an idea of what to expect just from doing some research and looking at it on Google Earth, but being here on the ground and experiencing it uh, firsthand has just been fantastic. I did get a lot uh, and, um, and uh, I feel pretty good, pretty good about it. So, hey, listen, I just want to close by saying thank you for being here. Thank you for your time and attention. Hope you enjoyed the video today. If you liked it, by all means, give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna be making some more of these in Utah. I'm heading on down the road now. I'm going west. I'm gonna to go towards uh, Capitol Reef. I'm gonna go out into the uh, back country there, and, uh, which should be really awesome. And, uh, and then I have some plans for some uh, other areas here in Utah after that. So uh, if you like landscape photography, and you uh, enjoy videos like this, by all means, uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I'll see you next time.